Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woken. I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. What are we talking about today? Well, they announced the Road to Seven Lost Belt 6 campaign, so I'm going to be talking about that today, because they put up all the info as I was thinking, hey, I probably have a day left to before I have to record talking about this, right? And that, Because the stream is going to be on the 27th. And then, uh, no. And the, the, right when I went to go log into Pogo, I saw the info. So, <laughs> let's talk about it. Starting now. So, it's going to start on the 27th. This says at, um, exactly at day roll. And it will last until December 11th, 2024. For a limited time, um... Some limited interlude quests are going to be open, which means that you're going to be able to do interludes for servants that you do not own. If you do not have these units, it's a good idea to do them, uh, because it's just literally free sync warts at that point. Um, the ones open for it are going to be Tristan, Percival, Red Hair, uh, uh, Kukalin, Caster, and Gareth. And then there will also be a limited time campaign to join with all the other limited time campaigns currently going on. Two times friend points, two times EXP gain, and two times great and super suck chance for the following servants. The following servants will receive also receive 30% bond points when clearing Avalon Lafay free quests. We got Muramasa, Bardigast, Tristan, Trico, or Babo Sith, um, Bobon Sith. I say her name wrong, but I always call her Babo Sith because of Babo Frick from Star Wars. Melusain, Percival, uh, Da Vinci Rider, uh, Habitrot. Castoria, Morgan, Oberon, Red Hair, Kukalan Caster, and Gareth, and then one half AP cost for the following quest, which is just Tristan, Kukalan Caster, and per not Percival, uh, Gareth, and then a one half AP campaign for all Avalon Lafay Avalon Le free quests, and uh, it will only apply for the first three times that you are doing the free quest. So basically, it's not like you can infinitely have them for half off or something, <laughs> which would be. Uh, very nice to have. Next, limited time master missions, which you'll be able to uh, complete from the 27th to the 11th, and then you'll be able to claim them from the 27th to the 18th. So just clear Avalon Le Fay free quest one, two, and three times, and that'll give you a Stargazer's Teapot, and then two Golden Foes, one for HP and the other one for attack. At Da Vinci's Workshop, we got the mini border, uh, which is gonna get, which uh, it's a command code which says gain two crit stars when attacking using the engraved card. And then remove one defensive buff for an enemy when attacking using the engraved card. Cost two rare mana prisms. Recollection quests. These are if hey, do you remember? <laughs> After you clear Avalon Le Fay main quest, recollection and super really recollection quests will be unlocked for the Avalon Le Fay map. Players are not allowed to use two of the same servants from support for super recollection quests. Basically, you get to experience some of uh, some annoying fights. It doesn't have the big annoying fight from this. So I'm just going to try and avoid as much spoilers just in case someone is still trying to catch up to it, which is why I also won't be showing the bosses. But they still got some pretty annoying ones on here. There's a lot of annoying fights on Avalon of I'm not looking forward to doing these again for the ticket. <laughs> Because uh, I think when I first did these, I did them by just literally bypassing a lot of it and just, like, reviving. I think so, at least. It was all a blur, to be fair. I think I actually only did that for two specific fights, which was the the big annoying fight, which I think took up a good majority of them. But anyway, Section 15, Arrow 6, Recollection Quest will unlock after you clear Avalon the Fae. And then the super version of it will unlock after you beat it along with the other one which is going to be section 24 arrow 4 recollection quest and then after you beat that you'll unlock the super recollection version and then for the final one which is section 30 arrow 3 recollection quest and beating the main ones will give you a ticket and beating the extra ones will give you 10 star geezers teapot so if you are like me and you're either lazy or you don't want to deal with a slightly harder fight then all you need to do is beat the base form of Avalon the Fae fights, and if you've already beaten Avalon the Fae, you've beaten these before. You just need to do it again, as much as I'm complaining about all the stuff I have to do. <laughs> and then finally, the summoning campaign, which will feature three servants. I'm only going to be talking about one of them because his banner is soon, and the other ones are far the hell away from him, so I'll do it closer to when they're there. But this, the, this banner here is pretty crazy. We got... Muramasa, which will be the first one up. We got Melusain, who will be second. And then Oberon, which will be the third of the five stars that will have his own banner. Red Hair is with Muramasa. Percival is with Melusain. And Kukalan Caster is with Oberon. For the schedule itself, from the 27th till the 5th of December, 
Muramasa will be up. And then starting from the 5th of December all the way to the 12th of December, Melusane will be there. And then for the 12th of December all the way to the 19th, Oberon will be there. And also there will be a rate up craft essence for uh, this specific CE, which is the Glaus Gloucester in 2020 uh, CE, which is the CE that you get after beating um, Avalon Le Fay, or after clearing uh, Lost Belt 6. So, uh... In terms of, so now we'll actually go over the unit. If you want to know a quick and dirty thing here about the other ones, this is a very good banner. The first one that I'm talking about, I think Mormonson actually is a very good unit. But compared to the other two, it would make 100% sense to skip him and potentially go for the other ones. Uh, with Melusine being a fantastic Lancer, probably the best on NA at the moment, I would say pretty confidently. I, I'll say based off of my experience using mine at NP2, with the Black Grail, uh, specifically farming with her, she sure kills a lot of things very easily. <laughs> Which, uh, what with her 100% NP and stuff like that. And Oberon is just, in general, one of the best generic supports that you can have, even though his third skill is specifically tailored for Buster. Because of the 70% he gives to NP, he's also insanely good just to have. A lot of specific team comps want you to have Oberon. So it makes sense that if you were uh, saving for the other two to skip off on Muramasa and for a lot of the upcoming servants that you want to talk about. But anyway, we'll now we'll talk about the specific banner coming up. And I'll talk more about Percival and Kukalan when the time comes. But I can say for a fact you should keep an eye on Kukalan over here. He's uh, If you can get him to MP5, I would 100%. Uh, so Muramasa shares his banner with Red Hair. Red Hair, I like Red Hair. The only thing you really need to know is that he is story locked, so he's a pain in the ass. So if you're looking to either get a single copy or to um, uh, get him to MP5, it's kind of a, like I said, a pain in the ass to do so. <laughs> so if you're a big Rare Hair fan, this is your chance to get him as much medals as possible, but for the most part, uh... I think you're okay to not summon for him. I think he is an AoE quick unit for riders. Yeah, you can see right here. And I th if I remember right, he ends up doing perfectly okay in, in that role specifically. I don't know if I've... Do we have this buff right here right now? We should have it right now. Server strengthening. This happened in 2024. No. So yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a while. I haven't used them in a bit, but that's just because I, in general, I don't do a whole bunch of quick farming with outside of certain specific units. But anyway, that's Red Hair. If you want to get your medals for him, then this is your perfect chance. If you want to go also for Muramasa at the same time. And then finally, the actual units talk about Muramasa. Uh, Muramasa, he's a saber. He has one quick, two arts, two buster. Uh, two hits on the quick, three hits on arts, three hits on buster, five hits on extra. His first skill is the Tamashi Mono B+, increased to Quick, Arts, Buster, and Crit Star Absorption for a single turn, and then gain some Crit Stars. For a single turn, his Quick, Arts, and Buster is up, uh, is increased by 50%. His Absorption is increased by 1,000. He gets 15 stars, and he's on a cooldown of 5. Second skill is the Karmic Vision A, ignores invincibility for one turn, increases on critical star, no, increases on crit damage against enemies with evasion or invincibility status for one turn. Increases on critical star generation rate for 3 turns. Increases on crit damage for 3 turns. 100% increase against anyone that is using evasion or invincibility. The star rate up is 100% and the crit damage is 100%. And the cooldown of 6. His third skill is Blaze EX, which charges his own MP gauge and then grants self the blaze buff for 3 turns. Charging on MP gauge when normal attacking. 50% up it to his MP and then the blaze MP is 10% and a cooldown of 6. Magic Resistance uh, B, Territory Creation A, Appreciation, the Aesthetic of Sword A, and the, Omni the Ominous Present Head B are his passive skills, with the last two being an increase to party's crit damage by 5% while self is on the field, and then an increase against own damage against king enemies by 20%. His third skill is an anti-caster attack damage aptitude, his uh, for a pens. And his noble phantasm is the Su Mukardi Muramasa, the Baseless Blade Works. Rank A+, anti-unit, it is art, it hits 3 times, it increases his own NP damage by 10% for 3 turns, it activates first, removes all enemy offensive buffs, any that you see the following here, it then deals damage that ignores defensive buffs to them. Uh, at MP level 1, his damage is 450%, if you get him to MP5, it's 750%. 
And then he also increases his own arts performance for three turns at 10% at MP level one. Um, and this activates first. And if you get him, not at MP level one, at charge level one, and if you get him all the way to the final charge level, it's 30%. And this hits three times, and that is Muramasa. Muramasa is a fantastic AoE saber. I think probably for arts on NA, probably the best one at the moment. I don't know, on JP, um, my cat Lucifer is meowing at me as if to say, hold up, hold your horses. Um, I don't know, he's really going at it. It's all right. <laughs> he's acting a little bit weird today. I don't know. Lucifer, are you okay? He's okay. All right. So as I was saying, he's a fantastic AoE saber. I don't know about the current state of JP enough to really say about um, how he compares to some of the other ones. Because I know for New Year's in two years time for us, there's going to be a very good um, AoE saber that comes out that's related to... Um, Samurai, Samurai Remnant, so they'll, they'll be coming uh, pretty soon, I mean two years time. Um, but he is really good at specifically farming and then also being able to do single target damage on, like, the fact he's really good at looping, uh, he works great with Castoria, so if you're someone who's also a big fan of uh, Shiro and Saber together, literally that's <laughs> that's the pairing of them right together there's not really much more i have to say about him uh as far as that goes but in terms of being able to be a looper he's fantastic at looping in terms of doing damage uh the ability to actually really punish any specific boss that would be able to have that either spams invincibility or does more of it is really good i think the only negative that i would ever have about him is just that a lot of his skills last a single turn so it means that like this ability right here like is really good but the fact that it only lasts for like a single turn is a little bit of like a oh well you're gonna get run really big good turn with him and then from then on it's a little bit of a diminishing one but at least he has some more recursion stuff and some of built into his specific noble phantasm the ability to remove offensive buffs is really good and like i said in any kind of challenging fight kind of scenario where you want to get rid of the offensive buffs this will just get rid of all of them from there while also making sure to not get rid of the defensive ones because he actually wants them to keep up for his second skill um he also has the ability to ignore defensive buffs to them as well which would really help because again like i said he doesn't want to remove them he just constantly wants to hit them with them and go with it from there so yeah, he's really good. I wish you the best of luck if you decide to go for him. I think it makes sense. He's definitely one of the ones where you look at him. He's a fan favorite for a lot of people. He has a cool design for a lot of people. And he's, again, based off of Shiro from Fates Day Night. So I don't blame anyone for going for him. But I will say that I do think that there are stronger units ahead of him that are beginning to be coming up. Uh, specifically, Melusane literally coming up a week later. Oberon, and then not only that, we also are expected to have... Um, Queen Skaya for, uh, oops, I got it. Expected to have Queen Skaya for, uh, end of December. I believe she'll be the last one to release before then. I believe she's a part of this one right here, if I remember correctly. Let me see if I remember correctly. Yep, Queen Skaya will be coming back. So if you're looking for a Buster support specifically to go over on, especially, Coin Sky will be coming up pretty soon, close to the end of December. Well, not pretty soon, but close to the end of December. And then we have New Year's to deal with, which will feature the classics that I've been mentioning. Cuckoo, Rasputin, if you're another fan of Fates Day Night, will have Rasputin slash Kotomine in it. Uh, Night, if you're a fan of Naito and cool designs in general, Naito Ultra will be coming up. Tez will be showing up right before Cuckoo, and then Cuckoo will be there. And then after Cuckoo, it's Draco, and there's a bunch of other stuff coming for the next year. So, spend wisely if you choose to spend on it. This is definitely one of the ones where it's like, yeah, this makes sense. This is for both the people who are just big fans of this specific character and also um, anyone looking for a pretty strong AoE saber. So, that's it for this video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. And as always, if you want to show support, you can always leave a like. Comment, tell me if you plan to summon or if you're looking to fight any of those dudes again. I'm not really looking forward to it. Or if you're just planning to grind it up. Thanksgiving's coming up pretty soon as well, so if you're American, like me, then you'll be busy hanging out with family and stuff like that. But if you're not, then I guess happy, enjoy, enjoy the farming, I guess. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.